You know, times are just so different right now. We're what, the second or so week into the coronavirus precautions and kids are out of school and people are out of work. Uh, a lot of folks are telecommunicating more than ever. People are seem to be hoarding just about anything that they can find at the grocery store. And there, are, there seem to be fewer cars on the road. Everywhere I go, it seems to be an awful lot less traffic on the side roads and on the main roads as well. You know, sports of every level are canceled, and any kind of group meeting of more than 10 persons has been shut down. The wedding that I had scheduled for Saturday has been postponed till sometime next fall. You know, and there's a lot of things going on that we've never lived through like this before. I don't think any of us can remember this kind of a shutdown. We're not busy, and it's not by our own design, and that's kind of scary. It's almost ironic now that most of what keeps us crazy busy is shut down so that we've got time to do what we've never had time to do before, but there's nothing to do because almost everything is shut down. These are strange times, strange times. Let me offer you a little poem that will give you strength and confidence while life is so different as we get a hold of life in the face of COVID-19. We've been reminded this week by Dr. Frank Shushak, Jr., the interim vice president for student affairs at Virginia Tech. Uh, Dr. Shushak says, our greatest tasks is to redirect social energy from anxiety and panic to care and preparation in ways that decrease fear, increase hope, and reorient us all to serving one another. Look with me, if you will, at the 23rd Psalm. It's a story of confidence. Arguably the best known poem, story, scripture verse in the entire Bible. The author, most likely King David, who was sometimes grave sinner and sometimes awful saint, gives us uh, two metaphors for expressing God's care in the poem here. He uses the uh, metaphor of a shepherd, that is a working on-site leader. And the banquet table is the other metaphor. Banquet tables being a place of physical nourishment and the strengthening of relationships. You know, think about your Thanksgiving table with your family and all that grows there. But check this, check this out. This, the Lord is my shepherd, the 23rd Psalm. Hear the word of God as it's contained here. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare us a table before me in the presence, right in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. Times are different. But this time is certainly not totally, completely different. The coronavirus has led to uncertainty about almost every aspect of our lives. We aren't sure what's going to happen from day to day, week to week. I don't know about you, but I've been constantly running through my head the different thoughts of uncertainty regarding the opening of our local school facility, grocery availability, stock market volatility, selling my house so that I can have somewhere safe to live when I move probability, health and welfare stability, and when are we going to get out of this thing without going nuts and stuck in some kind of facility? Mercy. And all of this, which a week ago we felt like we could count on being gone in just a few days, now we aren't sure. We wonder. We have raised emotions of fear and uncertainty. You know, but our historical experience should provide investors some kind of comfort, and our investment is ourselves in the kingdom of God. As we go not about what makes us afraid, but we go about what we might do in order to help other people that are around us not be so afraid. And we realize that we're still here together. And God's got us. And God's going to move us through this valley as well. 
A tool that's available for your use today is the historic image of the three-legged stool. This, think about a milking stool, you know, the kind that's got the seat here and the milker sits on of that back in the old days when you got milk from cows and the, the seat there is the Bible and then it's got three legs. It's got the leg of tradition, the leg of experience and the leg of, gosh, the leg of reason. And those three, scripture is primary, scripture is most important, but those other three things help us kind of take a look at even the coronavirus precautions and the uncertainty that's coming our way. Let me share a little bit about this with you. The first thing, the seed is the Bible. The Word of God is primary that leads our lives, shows us what we can do to be our very best selves. If you read the text, and it's not so much about what you can't do or what you ought not do, but read what God is doing for you, you say, hey, this really connects me to that which is so much greater than everything that I know is going on, and it connects down inside of me with that which really is my very best self. That's what God wants for us. So read the Word. That's what we rest on. The first leg is reason. It's our, reason is our God-given common sense. Everybody's got some. It just depends on how you're going to use it. The Lord who tells us that we won't be harmed by snakes is the Lord who gives us the built-in sense to stay away from snakes. If a snake can't touch you with any part of itself, it can't hurt you. During this time of coronavirus pandemic, don't get any nearer to anybody than you need. Wash your hands more often than you've ever done it before. Cover your mouth and your nose when you sneeze, maybe with your elbow, maybe with a tissue. Um, stay home when you don't feel good and don't spit. Honestly, we push these as acts of the nation that might stifle the spread of the coronavirus, but I'll be honest with you, this is just common sense stuff that my mother and father taught me when I was growing up. Don't spit, cover your mouth when you sneeze, watch your hands, and if you don't feel good, stay home, get well. Leg one, reason. The second leg of that stool is tradition. Our tradition is the continuing activity of God's spirit transforming human life. Tradition is the history of that continuing environment of grace in and by which all Christians live. It's God's self-given love in Jesus Christ, and as such, tradition transcends the story of particular traditions. The third leg of the milk and faith stool is experience. Experience is what we have learned from what has happened before. And I mean, we can learn from the past so that we don't repeat those same mistakes in the future, and the world has faced a lot of punishment, but we have survived. We've survived plagues and financial crises, wars, social unrest at home and abroad, pestilence of many stripes. And the good news is, we're still here. Thanks be to God, we're still here together. So I invite you to go back and read the biblical accounts of God with the people and their troubles. Such understanding will bring awareness of such experiences which inform our appropriation of scriptural truths and will sharpen our appropriation of the good news of God. You can use this by reason, experience, and scripture. You can tie in, and tradition, you can tie into scripture in ways that, that really will rock your socks. It really will show you a brand new picture. And there'll be some great stuff, and you'll go, wow, wow, I like this. I never understood it this way before, but God is with us even in the midst of all of our uncertainty. The psalmist writes of his experiences with God by recounting the common provision the Lord has given him in his life. The Lord makes sure, he says, that I have everything that I need. I've got green pastures. Green pastures don't mean a lot to us until we realize what he's talking about is a comfy place to rest and to eat. For some of us, it may be he gives us a nice lazy boy. He gives us a good table. He gives us good food. And he goes on to say that he gives us still waters, a place to drink, that which sustains life, which is water. The psalmist's experience has been that God gives protection. It says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know, in other words, knowing that I'm safe brings me comfort. And think about where you are. Think about what it takes for you to be safe in the midst of all of these things this day. 
from coronavirus, from running out of food or water or toilet paper. We're free from losing faith because we can't attend church. I mean, many of us don't attend church regularly anyway because we're doing sports with our kids. We're working. We're sleeping in. We're dropping the kids off at church and going home to go back to bed. I don't know. The list goes on. Well, now that church is closed, I'm thinking you might be just a little bit more mindful of church because we always think more of what we can't have or we can't do, where we can't go. So maybe, I don't know, just maybe, we'll be more inclined to look for church online and Therefore, we're here tonight to bring you the Word of God, just to touch your lives just a little bit, to make things a little bit easier, to make you a little bit stronger, and get you a little more connected with God. You know, we've all got a remarkable opportunity to elevate public health needs over engaging others in high-density spaces, I hope. I hope you'll find ways to remain appropriately connected with each other. Maybe to have a few family friends from the neighborhood over. Maybe to, to put together a brunch with just a, the, the people that live on each side of your house, folks that you don't usually get to talk to. Maybe it's a way to call some folks that you've been putting off calling and you can chit-chat. You can, you can go online with a Facebook live stream or Zoom or something like that. Just a way to be together. There's more volatility to come, but the perspective Perspective provides a positive view. Perspective is particularly important in periods like this, and the perspective that we want to share is the perspective of God, that God has walked people through this before, and God will carry it through us again. And you and I have seen how God walks with us in our day-to-day -day situations, sleeping, eating, drinking in good places, still waters, and we see how God's perspective is leading us because God is leading us through the long-term events of life. During death, physical death or other deaths, the loss of what was, God is with us and is moving us ever forward. Look at what the Bible says with me one more time. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil for you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We don't park in the valley. We move through the valley of the shadow of death and we get all the way through it, which means we've walked past death and we've walked back into life. God moves us from where we are through what we must get to so that we can be in the promised land that God gives us. Schools are not always going to be closed. Grocery stores are not always going to have empty shelves. You and I are not always going to be having to telecommunicate or be without groups. Restaurants are going to be open again. We're going to get on the back side of this thing. Life is going to probably be different from now on. This is going to be one of those things that we remember, kind of like we probably remember 9-11 or the shooting of JFK or Martin Luther King's death. This is one of those times that has made an impact on America and made an impact on each of us. But let's walk with God. Let's pray together and let's work as one so that we and the U.S. can move past the coronavirus threat and we can get on with life here in the kingdom of God. Let me offer a prayer with you and we can pray together. This prayer seems to, to touch me in a special way under these times of trial and tribulation. Let's pray. God, give me grace to accept with serenity the things that cannot be changed. Give me courage to change the things which should be changed and the wisdom to be able to know the difference. Lord, live in one day at a time enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Be with us now and always. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.